Okay, so we've done a lot of coming up with the pattern or the rule or the equation from tables. Um, and we used those rules to do different things. We used the rules to graph, talked about the connection there. We used the table to graph, talked about the connection there. Um, so today what we're looking at is making rules from graphs. And um, I think I've probably said this, really what we're doing in the previous unit and this unit now we're, we're starting to look at applications but you know we really can look at this the same way that we were looking at it in last unit um, and it's all about going all the different ways that you can go so starting with a graph and coming up with a rule starting with a rule and coming up with a table or a graph starting with a table and coming up with a rule or a graph so whatever you start with being able to come up with all the other forms okay and, there, and i've said this there's one more form we're going to talk about that one soon we're going to add that in and from starting from any of the four forms will our goal is to be able to come up with the other three so this is the first time we're starting with just a graph but the great thing about it is hopefully you are starting to get comfortable with these kinds of rules or equations of linear relations remember we're always talking about linear relations you can see already in this example that this is a straight line which is what a linear relation is and um, it's always the same for a linear relation there's two important things and those two important things are how much for zero or where does it start right depending on which way you're thinking about it and then what is the change or what is the rate of change what is the slope again those are th different ways of saying the same thing but those two things are what it always boils down to whether you're starting with a table whether you're starting with the rule whether you are starting with a graph and so no matter what i'm starting with i have to be able to use what i'm given to find those two things we looked at in a table how you do that let's see if i can find an example of one there you go so we are finding the change from the graph and using the change to find how much for zero and then we take that and we know how to write the rule with that information okay that's what we need to know we need to know how to find it from a table and we need to know how to write it as a rule because if i can write it as a rule then when I'm looking at a rule, I can figure it out from the rule as well, right? I can go all the different directions, hopefully. So today we're going to talk about um, how to do it from a graph. We're only going to do one example together, but there will be um, other, there will be an activity posted that you can do optionally and it will have solutions that has a whole bunch more examples. Um, and then there will be some practice and the solutions for that will be available in the classroom as well um, for you to make sure that you're on the right track. Whenever we're talking about a linear relation, there's always two things we need to find. Where does it start and what is the change? And take a look at these questions. Um, how much for zero classes? So that is the start. Right? And then how much does each class cost? Not the first class, not one class. How much does each class cost? Uh, or per class is another way we like to say that. And this is the change, the rate, whoops, rate of change or the change. Where does it start and what is the change? Those are the two important things. And so that's what these two questions are going to find for us. Now, how do we do that from a graph? For some part of this might be obvious, might be straightforward uh, to some people, or it might not. Um, so this is what you're connecting to today is this, these two ideas. And once you come up with, once you understand how to get those from a graph, that's all there is to it. So the start is fairly straightforward. How much for zero? Well, it's just this point right here because that's how much for zero. This is this this is zero right here, right? That's your zero. So when I follow that up and I find that point, that's how much it is for zero. So I've got to figure out what the scale is. And it looks like starting at zero, I go one, two, three, four, five to get to 50. 
And so I could do 50 divided by 5, which gives me 10, which means each individual square is 10. And again, that might be intuitive to some people, but not intuitive to others. But determining what the scale is counting by is always something we have to do. So take a look. This is 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. So I can see that it is counting by tens. Whoops. And take a look. That's 20. And that's how much for zero. And the units for that are dollars because it's just $20. I can see that the cost is labeled for that vertical axis and it starts at 20. And, and if that's not intuitive or obvious to you, or if that's not clear, then you want to, you want to think about that, make a note of that. And when you're doing the practice, just try to do it enough times that you've memorized it that it's just where that line crosses this vertical axis, okay? Sometimes it's going to be a point that we can see, and sometimes it might not be a point that we can see. In either case, um, I want to figure out what that value is, and that's all it is to it. I just write that down. That's how much it is for the start or for zero classes, okay? Um, okay, next... We need to find out what is the change, how much is it per class, or how much does each class cost, okay? Um, before I go on, let's just talk about this. It's a, it, I, I sort of neglected to say this. It, this is about a gym membership. I'm not sure we've looked at this kind yet. Think about a gym membership working like this. Again, people, people get nervous about applications because they think they're word problems. They think it makes it harder, but I actually think for, our, for us right now, it's the opposite. I think this makes it easier because this is a real life situation and you can connect to it in a real way. So I think this is something everybody could make sense of. You have a gym membership. So you pay, let's say $20 to be a member of the gym and that might get you access to the pool and the weight room and that kind of thing. But if you want to take a class, yoga class, workout class, um, any other kind of class, you have at this gym, you have to pay per class. So you can just pay $20 and just use the equipment. But if you want to take classes, you have to pay per class. Okay, the classes are not free. And that's how much it costs you for the month or whatever for this for this gym. Okay, and that makes sense. There's lots of things that may work that way, right? There's lots of things in the world that will work that way. They have an upfront cost and then a cost per use, which makes the total cost go up over usage, over time, or like hours, or number of classes that you take. The more classes you take, the more it's going to cost you, okay? But it's not free if you take zero classes. There's still a cost to use this gym. So that's what it's talking about. So now how am I going to figure out how much it, it costs per class. How, how much is it changing by? Well, I can pick this point here and this point, and I can see that that is five classes, right? And that's easy because it's labeled. Sometimes you might have to, again, figure that out kind of like we figured out that this was 20, okay? But in this case, it was fairly obvious. Well, now I want to figure out in five classes, what did the total cost? change by. So this was 30 here, and this is 20 here. And so 30 minus 20. And of course, you can always use your calculator if you want to. Okay. Um, and sometimes it might be easy to do in your head. This might be one of those times, but there will be times that it's not as easy. And so you have to understand that this is the operation of subtraction and to find the difference. And in this case, it works out to be 10. Okay. And so that's a change of 10. So in five classes, I went up by $10. Now people are going to say, but hold on, five classes cost you $30. Look, five classes cost you $30. And 30 divided by 5 is 6, so that looks like $6 per class. But that would be wrong. Why? Because I didn't start at 0. 5 classes does cost you $30, but that's because of the $20 that's built into it. Right? So 
the five classes actually changed the cost from 20 up to 30, which is a change of $10. Okay, so $10, whoops, $10 for five classes is 10 divided by five. Again, feel free to use your calculator. is two. So therefore, this is two dollars per class is the change or the cost per class or the cost for each class is two dollars. Okay. I hope that's clear. Again, everything boils down to those two ideas. Where does it start and what is the change? So we talked about the start from the graph. Once that connects for you and makes sense, it's so straightforward. It's just where your line starts from, okay? It's not always a dot. It might just be a line. In fact, let me show you an example of that. So this is one of the examples in the activity that you can do. And you can see that this does have dots on it to show you some points, but the starting place is not a dot. Now it's fairly obvious, I think, where it starts for this one, okay? But some other examples might not be as obvious. So that's what I'm talking about, is it that it may not actually have a dot there, so you'll have to figure it out. Okay, so those are the two important things. Where it starts, hopefully, once it clicks for you, that's fairly straightforward. And the other one is what is the change? And the change, for the to, to figure out the change, I have to look at two parts. So I have to look at this part, what was the change in, in this case, number of classes? And I have to look at this part. In this case, what was the change in cost? And it was, it went from 20 to 30, which is an increase of $10. And that was for five classes. So $10 for five classes is $2 per class. Now, what is the rule? So I'm going to go up here and this graph doesn't give me variables. It's not a bad idea to look for the variables if it shows them in, in there. Sometimes it might look like this. So I'll write them in. Cost. Okay. And for this one, it might, or it might be written on the graph like that. N and C for for cost and for number of classes. If the variables aren't there, you can choose them. We'll talk about that more again another time. If you use the wrong variables, it's not the end of the world. Don't use C for cost and C for classes. Don't use C twice, okay? Uh, we often use N for number of something, H for hours, T for time. There are standard ones that we use, but it's not gonna be wrong if you use a different one. So our rule always works like this. In this case, it's going to be cost equals something plus something n. And if you're still not fully understanding these rules, this is going to be really important. So this is going to be the start. And this is going to be the change every single time. Okay, and you want to write this down and keep that in mind always. And all I'm going to do is fill in two numbers into those places. What makes the change important is that it's the thing multiplied by the other variable and the start has no variable beside it. So in this case, my start is 20 and my change is two. So my rule becomes C equals the start 20 plus two times N. The other way you can look at it, we've talked about this lots, okay, is C equals something N plus something. And in this case, the start goes there and the change goes there. It's not what comes first and what comes second. It's what is with 
the variable and what is by itself. Okay, so the other way I could write this, uh, I'm running out of space here, I'll do it a little, kind of smaller, or c equals 2n plus 20, right? So the that's still the start because there's no variable beside it. That's still the change because it has a variable beside it. Use your rule to check one other point. What does this mean? For this activity, you're going to pick any one of these points. Okay, I kind of already talked about this one, so I'm going to skip it, but it would be fine if you wanted to use it. And I'm going to use this point 15. So I take this value. I always take the value along the horizontal axis. Okay, so I follow it down to see what it is. I don't pick some point like this because I don't know exactly what that point is. So I pick a nice one, okay? And in this case, I picked n equals 15. So I'm gonna get c equals 20 plus two n, and 15 goes in for n. Two times 15, is 30, 20 plus 30. Answer means it takes my last answer, which was 30, adds them together, gives me 50. Why is this useful? Because take a look. This was the point I was checking. If I follow it over, it's 50. If I follow that line straight over, it gives me 50, so that was correct. So when I've done this, it's basically a check that my rule is right because I've I developed the rule using these points and then I checked it against this point. I could check it against this point as well because this rule is going to work for every point along this line. That's what a rule means. So no matter what point I pick on that line, this rule is going to give me that same answer. So I used 15 and I got 50. And once again, from this graph, this point is 15 and 50. Okay. And that's my check that I did it correctly. If you were doing a quiz or a test, you could do the same thing if you had time and you usually do. You could pick an extra, when you've come up with a rule, whether it's from a table or a graph, even if the question doesn't ask you to check your own, you could just do that yourself, right? As your own check to make sure that you're on the right track. So I hope that that's familiar with what we did before with rules from tables and then using those to make graphs. This is going the other direction, but there's a lot of, um, of, of knowledge or understanding that crosses over between the two. Because like I said, it always comes down to what is the rule and what is the change. And I need to, I, we've done a lot of finding that from tables. Now we've looked at it, how it connects to a rule. Okay, that's this part right here. How do you write a rule from that? And now we've also looked at it from a graph. How do we get it from a graph? This is something we've kind of already talked about because we've made graphs with it, but this is starting from a graph, okay? So there'll be two, th two different ways that you can practice. There will be some specific practice, but there'll be another activity with a bunch of examples like this, and the solutions to all of it will be posted. Good luck.